Hi folks, in this episode we're going to talk about core. Uh, so here's the definition. Uh, core is basically the core of a game, a coalitional game G, is nothing but the set of all stable outcomes. Okay, that's it. So core of a coalitional game G can be mathematically defined as payoff vectors, all payoff vectors, uh, which remember satisfies individual rationality and feasibility, such that for every coalition C, uh, the, the total payoff of coalition C should be no less than the worth of coalition C. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, definition of formal definition of stability, stability and all stable payoff, outcome, uh, payoff vectors basically uh, forms the set of uh, the set which is called as core of a game. All right. Well, as we discussed, um, core or stable outcomes are basically uh, a payoff vectors where no coalition has incentive to deviate because if the payoff vector gives some uh, coalitions less than what this coalition is worth, if it is alone, uh, well then this payoff vector is not going to be uh, stable because this coalition has incentive to deviate and, and basically uh, you know, leave the called grand coalition and form their own coalitions. All right. So in a sense, uh, stability is uh, 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 very similar to the concept of Nash equilibrium, but this time the, uh, the deviations are not done by individuals only, but the coalitions can also deviate. All right. Well, the question is, uh, for games, uh, can we say uh, there always exists a stable outcome? Or, so to speak, is the core, uh, the set of core allocations, can it be ever empty? Uh, yes, it can be empty. So here is one example. And this is also a very nice example to show how we basically calculate the set of core allocations or the set of uh, uh, stable outcomes. So there are three players, uh, one, two, three. Uh, the worth of a coalition is equal to one or zero, all right? So the worth of a coalition takes only two values. It is one if the number of players in coalition C is greater than one, I mean, either two or three. Uh, if there are only one player or no player, well, then the worth of this coalition is equal to zero, okay? So in a game like this, how do we calculate uh, a stable outcome or how do we find a stable outcome or core uh, of a game? Well, simple. Remember, a payoff vector is nothing but x1, x2, x3, right? Uh, so this is a, a potential stable outcome. It has to satisfy following uh, conditions. Well, the first condition, it has to be individually rational, meaning x1 should be greater than or equal to the worth of uh, uh, player one, all right? Same for x2, same for x3. But don't forget, according to the uh, worth function, uh, if the coalition has less than two uh, players, well, then its worth is equal to zero. So therefore, we have to have x1 greater than or equal to zero, x2 greater than or equal to zero, and x3 greater than or equal to zero, okay? Well, the second condition is the feasibility. It says x1 plus x2 plus x3 must be exactly equal to the worth of this coalition. Sorry, so what is the worth of this coalition? Well, again, because there are more than uh, two players, its worth is just one. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 must be equal to one. Okay, well, uh, that basically... Uh, narrows down our attention to positive numbers or non-zero, uh, non-negative numbers, uh, which all add up to one, right? Okay, so x1, x2, x3 may be, I mean, should be a number between zero and one, basically. But that's not it. Uh, we should also use the stability concept. So what is the stability concept? It basically says for any coalition, uh, the total, the sum 
uh, of the payoffs of this coalition should be no less than the worth of this coalition. So here, I mean, if you like, you can just write down the coalitions, the potential coalitions, right? The empty sets, uh, only player one, only player two, only player three, and then one, two, and then one, three, and then two, three, and then finally one, two, three. So these are all possible coalitions. Well, here, uh, by the way, don't forget, the worth of empty set is always zero, all right? Well, we don't really have to look at those instances because as long as x1, x2, x3 are positive and non-negative, uh, you know, individual deviation is not going to be uh, profitable, all right? Meaning individual rationality already uh, um, fulfills this requirement for every singleton coalition, that's what I mean. So. All we have to do, therefore, check those uh, the uh, 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 the stability requirements for these four coalitions. So that implies what x1 plus x2, right? This is the the total sum of the payoffs of this coalition should be greater than or equal to what the worth of this coalition, which is because it has more than one players or two or more players, its worth is just one. Well, what else? Uh, x1 plus x3 should also be greater than or equal to 1. What else? x1 plus x3, oh, I'm sorry, x2 plus x3 should be greater than or equal to 1. And then finally, x1 plus x2 plus x3 should be greater than or equal to 1. But it can't be strictly greater than 1 uh, because of the uh, feasibility requirements. So, you know what? We don't really have to worry about this because the feasibility captures uh, this requirement. Uh, I mean, this requirement for uh, the um, grand coalition. So, therefore, we have to find x1, x2, x3, which satisfy how many? Those seven uh, inequalities. Inequality 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay? So, the question is, well, uh, because there are three parameters, I can't really draw uh, them on a uh, sort of a, a board. Um, because there are x1, x2, x3, so we could basically draw a three-dimensional space and, and sort of uh, put all those restrictions on that picture and see that actually there's going to be no x1, no x2, no x3 that satisfy all those seven requirements. Don't forget, all of those requirements must be satisfied uh, so that x is a stable outcome or in the core. Well, the question is, is there any x that satisfy all those requirements? Well, let's see. Let's first use this equality. So it says x1 plus x2, I send x3 to the other side, 1 minus x3, right? So here, when I come here, I have x1 plus x2 on the left-hand side, which is equivalent to 1 minus x3. So this inequality, in fact, is equivalent to saying 1 minus x3 is greater than or equal to 1, all right? Well, how is this possible if you send x3 to the other side and 1 to the other side, so 1 minus 1 is 0, less than or equal to x3? Okay, so look, uh, there's one condition, so the, the, this condition plus this condition basically implies x3 must be non-positive, However, I know that x3 cannot be negative. So therefore, there's only one way these two are going to hold at the same time, which is only when x3 is equal to 0. So we must have x3 equals 0. Okay, so if x3 is equal to 0, plug it here. This requirement implies... <laughs> excuse me. Uh, implies x1 is greater than or equal to 1 right? x3 is 0, and x2 is greater than or equal to 1. So these numbers can't be strictly less than 1. Okay, so I come back here. Remember, this has to hold as well. Well, x1 is greater than or equal to 1. x2 is greater than or equal to 1. But there is no way uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3, which is 0, Right? So x1 plus x2 plus x3, which is x3 is 0, we already found x1 plus x2, 
all right? Well, this, according to this, has to be greater than or equal to two, but here it says x1 plus x2 is equal to one, all right? This has to be equal to 1. So 1 has to be greater than or equal to 2. Well, we know that 1 is not greater than 2. It's not equal to 2. And so this inequality doesn't hold. So what does that mean? That means if I have all those seven premises, all right, uh, well, I'm going to get contradiction. One of those must be wrong. Which one? I don't know. But I don't care because in order for x to be stable, I need all seven to be true. But I just show that all seven cannot be true at the same time because I get a contradiction like one is greater than or equal to two. Hence, there is no x, no payoff vector for this game where uh, x is a stable outcome. Hence, the core of this particular game is empty, so there's no stable outcome. Well, I wanted to do this on sort of purpose because we can actually use this logic, meaning just uh, formally write down all these inequalities, all right? Then solving all those x1, x2, x3, I don't know how many, uh, sort of players are there in this uh, game, but solve those x values, solving those x values are going to give us the stable outcomes. Clearly, when we have more than three players or, you know, two players, uh, the solution of this is nothing but a, a linear programming problem. And to be honest, as the number of players increase, the solution is not so easy to do it by hand. We, uh, well, so uh, that's the deal. Obviously, we're going to work with sort of simpler examples where solving those inequalities is easier, relatively. Uh, but in general, where we, when we have more than, you know, three players, uh, things may get very complicated. Okay?